Hello everyone, this is Neon. Welcome to Impromptu English with Neon. And finally, the IELTS listening video is out. I've been working on it. I've been trying to at least work on it for the last two weeks. Finally, it's complete. So enjoy. It's all the different strategies for every single question on the IELTS listening test. If you don't know me, my name is Mohaiminul Islam Neon. I have scored a band score of 9 in listening and an 8.5 band overall. And I'm a university lecturer in the Department of English at Green University of Bangladesh. And my book has also been published. It's a novel titled Sociolinguistic Incompetence. You can find the links in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. Here's a very basic overview of the entire IELTS listening test. First, the time. Most of you know that we have about 30 minutes, around 29 or maybe 28 minutes for the actual listening test and then an extra 10 minutes for the paper-based test for transferring the answers. So whatever you write on the IELTS question paper, that will not count for the listening and reading portion if you're sitting for the paper-based test because you have to transfer the answers to a separate answer script. So you get 10 minutes for that. And if you're sitting for the computer-based test, then you only have two minutes after the finishing of the audio clips just to revise your answers. You do not have 10 minutes because you do not have to transfer any answers to a separate answer script because whatever you choose on the screen, those answers will be final. Just like the reading test, there will be a total of 40 questions on the IELTS listening test and there will be four parts, whereas there are three parts on the reading test. So four parts on the listening test and each part will have 10 questions. Part one, 10 questions, part two, part three, part four. They all have 10 questions each. So in part one, it will be a dialogue. A, a very basic context will be used here. For example, a person will call for a customer care service or a person will call to reserve a room in a hotel or maybe at a hospital, or maybe at a coaching center. So it will be very basic. The other person from the other side, he or she will ask for the customer's name, address, and other relevant information, maybe weight, height, and other things. So it's very basic. However, please pay attention to the name spelling because sometimes the spellings, they may be a bit difficult. For example, use. What's the spelling of use? If there is any spelling like this, they will always, always spell out the spelling. So, use will be spelled most probably like H-U-G-H-E-S. Use. Part two is a monologue. A monologue is when one person talks throughout the audio clip. So, usually in part two, it's a common topic that one person is talking about. Maybe something about a hospital that has recently have had some developments. So there may be a map or there may be an academic topic that he or she is talking about. So part two will be a monologue, which is that one person will speak about a very common topic. So it's basically an easy version of part four, whereas part one is an easy version of part three, which is also a dialogue. Part three, like part one, is also a dialogue, but two people will be talking about usually an academic topic. And finally, in part four, it will be another monologue, but it will be almost always a lecture by an expert, a researcher, a professor. So the question types are MCQs, multiple choice questions. There will be two to three options. If there are five options, then you may sometimes have to select two correct answers. So please be aware of the instructions, whether they're asking you to select one or two correct answers. There will also be some information matching questions where there will be some information with other information you have to match them. And the most dreaded question type is the map question for most people. So you have to trace a map and you have to listen to some instructions and then identify the points, the sections, the parts of a map with some information and then you have fill in the blanks questions where you just have to write one or two or three words in the blanks to make the whole sentence complete 
finally you may have to answer some short questions there will be very short answers within three words maximum and sometimes one or two words so this is very very important i think this is the most important strategy which is for you to learn how to use pauses so in between the listening test you will actually find a lot of pauses where there will be nothing said on the audio and you just have time to look at the questions or to revise your answers so in total actually i counted this this is not very exact for all the ielts listening tests but roughly you will get five and a half minutes so even if it's you can say even if you do not get a lot of pauses for your particular test at least five minutes you can definitely think that you will have for checking and also reviewing the next questions so that's a lot of time actually so out of 30 minutes you get five minutes where nothing is being said so you should definitely use this five minutes and even more usually five and a half minutes is the average you should use these very very wisely so here are my strategies before starting you should do this in the first 30 seconds i suggest you to go through the entire test that means part one part two part three part four just flip through the pages if it's a paper based test and if it's a computer based test just go to all the four parts browse them so what will it do it will at least give you some mental peace and furthermore you'll be able to check whether there is any map question or any information matching questions so usually there is at least one section where you have information matching questions and sometimes you have map questions and sometimes you do not i for one had a map question and also an information matching question i had both of them so within this 30 seconds please check for these and also go through the entire test so yes within 30 seconds you do not have to exactly maintain the 30 second timeline of course it can be 25 seconds it can be 35 seconds but around 30 seconds you should do this for the next 30 seconds what should you do so probably you will have at least either a map question or an information matching question or maybe even both of them so if you have a map question then within this second 30 seconds out of the first 90 seconds which means from 31 to 60 seconds you can go to the map questions and i'll show you how to deal with map questions in particular but you should definitely go to the map questions for the first audio clip actually start or at least the information matching questions if there are no map questions then for the remaining 30 seconds which means before the first audio clip starts so before that go to part one because you also should at least spend some time reviewing the first part even though it's easy i suggest taking 30 seconds you do not actually need it because when the audio clip starts there is a lot of unnecessary talk unnecessary in the way that it doesn't relate to any answers so when the audio clip actually starts in the middle of part one which means after question number four or five or six usually it's question number six but it may vary so after that there will be a 30 second break in this break do not just go to the, the next half of part one which means do not just go to question number seven no for the first 20 seconds go again to the map questions or the information matching question and then do some things which i will show you what to do actually in detail in the next few slides but just remember that you should dedicate some time of this pause to the map or the information matching questions then when you think that okay i'm almost running out of time after maybe 20 seconds of doing that then go back to part one because some part of part one is remaining use that time to review or skim scan and highlight questions number seven eight nine and ten so you don't need a lot of time to do this you cannot do this in 10 seconds so why did i say to do it in 10 seconds because when the audio clip starts you also have some time to read the questions even when the audio clip is playing because not all the words are obviously your answers you only have to find 40 answers so obviously not all the words are important especially at the start they will give some background information so you can use that time to read 
before fill in the blanks questions or short question answers you will have instructions regarding the maximum word count for example something like write one word and or a number for each answer or write two words and or a number or three words and or a number if it is one word and or a number the acceptable answers are just 1010 it, it has two digits but still it's a number of course even if it has five six digits like 10,001 lakh still it's a number if it is written numerically like one zero and also ten what is this this is a word because you have spelled out the number both are correct and also one zero then a space then meters this is also acceptable because the first one is a number and the next one is a word that is also fine because it is one word and a number on the first word one word or a number this is a number this is a word we look at this one t e n m e t e r s is it one word and or a number no because there are two words here so it fits the second criteria 10 meters and also the last one 10 meters long the first word is a number and the rest of the two words are actually words so this satisfies this criteria what about the last one three words and or a number here actually you have to spell all of the words out ten then meters long if you write one zero then meters long it becomes two words and a number which does not fit this criteria so yes there could also be a sample answer like this which has three words and a number such as 10 meter long distance something 10 meter long race however here from these options only this one fits the criteria 10 meters long yes you should definitely sit for the computer based IELTS test instead of the paper based IELTS test there are a number of reasons for doing so I have a whole video on it as you can see on the screen where I discussed 14 advantages and only four disadvantages of the computer based IELTS test this next strategy of writing in block letters is something that many people do not know about or many people think that this is not actually important so if I ask you which of these answers are acceptable do you think that this is acceptable T R A I N with R and I capitalized no they are not acceptable they are never acceptable in any sort of academic writing what about these ones train with a T capital and train with no capital letters and also population does population have to be written in all small letters or can the first letter be capitalized actually I think most of you know this that at the beginning of the sentence you have to capitalize words and if the words come in the middle of the sentence and if they are common nouns or other parts of speech like adjectives or adverbs you have to make it small letters we all know this most probably however if it's in a bullet point then usually we write in small letters some people still write in capital letters even in bullet points so you have to refer to the other lines of the question so you don't need to think about all of them in the test itself it's very time consuming and it's also something that you have to think about it's very much a little and silly reason to get incorrect answers so just write everything in block letters every single letter like T R A I N, everything in block letters I wrote everything in block letters on my reading and listening test and I had no problem I scored a band 9 out of 9 in both of them so definitely just stick to this especially on a paper based test if your handwriting is not very comprehensible it's not very understandable it is a very good idea to write in capital letters please do rough work whenever you are attempting the test even on a computer based IELTS test yes there are ways to do rough work even if you sit for a computer based test they will give you one or two pages you will be given one or two pencils an eraser a sharpener please do some rough work at least highlight keywords and you can also make some comments on the computer screen it's very easy to do and if it's a paper based test it's even more convenient just write something on the question paper it will not count as any answers of course the answers 
have to be on the separate answer script. So you can write anything you want on the question paper. Please take some notes, highlight some keywords and underline and circle as you wish and as far as it helps you. And if there are any incorrect answers that you are sure that they are incorrect, especially in MCQs and especially in information match questions, you should cross them out or you should circle them, you should underline them after you have confirmed that they will not be correct answers. And let's say it's an information match question where you have to select five correct options from seven options. So one option you have already answered. It's not an incorrect answer, but it's the correct answer, but still circle it or underline it. And on the computer based test, you can highlight it to make sure that you do not have to look at this option again. So it is very important to do this rough work. Finally, on a map question, please trace your pencil if it's a paper based test over the question paper as they are directing you as the audio clip is giving you directions. And if it's the computer based test, please hover your mouse as the directions are being given. If they say, for example, from your left, turn to your right and keeps going straight forward. So if they say something like this, it's very difficult to visualize this without tracing your pencil or moving your pencil according to the directions. This is very important. Finally, map questions, the most difficult questions according to many IELTS test takers. Why are they difficult actually? They are difficult because you may be overwhelmed by the amount of information that you have in front of you. The other questions are only related to text. There are only rare questions regarding flowcharts, but a map is more than just a flowchart. It is very visual. You have to think of a wide portion of a wide surface. So what should you do to make it easy? As you can see on the screen, I am saying to highlight these areas, the following areas, all the entrances. For example, there might be two or three entrances of the map. Maybe it's a park, maybe it's a town, maybe it's a factory. Whatever the map of the area is, there will be some entrances most probably so maybe there are two entrances or even one entrance if it's only one entrance then it is very easy to pick out but sometimes there are two or three entrances and suddenly the speaker says from the left entrance you go to the right and if you do not notice where the left entrance is it may be difficult for you suddenly to go to the left entrance so definitely mark all the entrances of course all the roads as well suddenly and the speaker may say from that road, from Norton Road, from the Southeast Road. So definitely mark all of them. How will you highlight, by the way, if it's a paper based test, just circle or underline or do whatever you want to make it very noticeable. And if it's a computer based test, you can simply highlight the bridges, the trees, the ponds, rivers. If there are any <laughs> such landmarks, please highlight them. So other examples are schools, playgrounds, warehouses, supermarkets. These are quite common. Not all of them will be there, of course, but maybe four to five of them will be there, especially entrances, roads and trees. They are very common. Next, I'd like you to do some rough work where on the sheet of paper, if it's a computer based test, if not, if you're taking the paper based test, you can just do the rough work on the question paper itself. Go to the questions and highlight all the keywords. The keywords, what are they? They are the most important words in the questions. They are typically verbs or nouns or something that is the most important part of that question. Then what should you do? You should list out all the options. Let's say there are eight options or seven or six options. Just write them down sequentially. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Why should you do this? Because when answering the question, when the audio clip is on, so let's say the first answer, let's say the answer to question number 15 is C, then just cut C, okay, cross C out or maybe erase C so that you will have one less option. If you do this like this after listing all the options, it is easy for you to keep track of which questions are remaining and which questions are already answered. It's very important. It works well for me 
and for many of my students as well. Number three, predict answers when possible. I'll show you how to predict answers in the next slide. And as I said, you should trace with your pen if it's a paper-based test or a mouse, if it's a computer-based test, according to the audio directions, whatever the speaker directs you to in whichever direction. And as I said, cross out any option you have already answered. Let's take a look at a sample listening map question. On the right side of the screen, you can see the map. So it's what? It has a river. It has some paved roads. It has some. It has the main road to the south. And also the directions are given. You don't need to memorize them. In most cases, the directions north, south, east and west, they will be given on the question itself. So look at this. Here A is a very big building, so you can also highlight this if you want. B is a very small area. Look at E, there are some trees here. I highlighted the road, the river, and see there is only one entrance, and there's a field outside. Okay, we have highlighted the important areas. Let's do some rough work. We will list out all the options, like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Now we will try to predict the answers when possible. Let's try to predict it, guys. Is it possible to predict? New car park, it's number 15. So a car park, do you think a car park should be big or is it a very small area? I think it's a relatively big area, but not very big. Mm, I think maybe B can be an answer, but it's not definite, it's not confirmed. So let's say, that we will not predict anything for 15. Let's go to 16. New cricket pitch. So cricket pitch, it's something that is a very big area. So we can predict that it will not be B. We can write something like not B. What about children's playground? So it will not be very small. Like it will not be E. It will not be B. It will be a big area or maybe near the trees. What is a pavilion? It's a small house or a small set of houses. What's a skateboard ramp? It also requires a lot of space. What about a notice board? Do you think a notice board will be very big like A or will be inside the community hall or something? No, it may be at an intersection. It may be very near the entrance such as H. This is a good place for a notice board. So you can see after predicting some of the answers we have actually, we can actually very much guess some of the options but not all of them after the listening map questions the most difficult in many people's minds are the information map questions on the listening part so the strategies are similar not exactly the same but similar first we will highlight all the keywords in the questions let's try to highlight them important aspects being flexible so flexible is the main word here focusing on details so details is more important here Having a smart appearance, so smart appearance, this is important. Hiding your emotions, I think both hiding and emotions, both are important here. Relying on experts, relying experts. Trusting own views. Doing one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Let's see. Thinking of the future. So these are the keywords. So let's now try to predict some of the answers. Events management skills, communication. So which skill actually corresponds to that important aspect? If somebody has to have good communication skills, what should he or she have? Future. So no, it will not be H, it will not be G, not also F probably, not E, but maybe communication has to do with C. Maybe. So we can write possible answers in bracket. We can write C, we can write something like A, even B to some extent. If we are not sure, still we can put it in possible answers. Then organization, which one? Being flexible, I don't think so. Focusing on details, maybe, maybe B, in brackets B. Having a smart appearance, no, not organization, I think. Relying on experts, trusting your own views. Doing one thing at a time, it can also be included. What about time management? Here, I think time management, G is pretty much the only answer. So like this, you can narrow down your options very much. Sometimes it is very easy to predict some of the answers and sometimes you are not sure, but you don't have to be sure. Of course, the audio clip will play. 
you don't have to guess the answers to get them correct but it definitely helps how should you avoid getting stuck on a question i think it happens to all of us it happened to me as well when i practiced i was listening at home i found out that i got stuck in one question and then the next answer was going on and i was almost missing it or maybe i completely missed it because i was stuck in one question so how should you avoid it you should definitely have an eye on the next question so from one question to the next there should be a transition look at it why does the speaker apologize about the seats so this question is about the speaker being sorry about the seats and the next question is about something totally different it's about the age of volunteers so if you highlight the questions information the keywords then it is also very easy to keep an eye on the next question you do not need to look at the whole question just the age of volunteers so this question is about the age of volunteers this question is about training so whenever the speaker suddenly talks about the age of anybody or suddenly talks about training shifting from age to training it is very easy to catch it because it's a shift in topic it's a different topic so if you keep one eye on the next question it will do you very much good at least you will know that okay the answer to this question has already been given now let's move on to the next question and also if you do not catch any of the answers just guess anything especially if it's an mcq just write one answer because even if you get the answer wrong you will not have negative marking so just predict something and move on to the next question and as i was talking about predicting in the previous slide it will also help you to avoid getting stuck on a question even before the audio clip plays if you have some time to review the questions then you can think about some of the answers before the audio clip plays for example a suitable group of elephants from the same dash was selected what can be the answer something like from the same family from the same group from the same maybe location something like that from the same species vets and park staff made use of dash so made use of maybe trackers made use of maybe lasers or something so something they used to help them guide the elephant. the process had to be completed quickly to reduce something to reduce maybe energy to reduce maybe anxiety to reduce damage elephants had to be turned on their dash to avoid damage to their lungs had to be turned on their back on their sides on their belly on their stomach so if you know the structure of the questions then you know that it will be a noun and here it will be a noun as well made use of dash it should be a tool so you can predict a lot of answers even if they are not right you will get a general idea of the answers i think it works very well it helps a lot finally i'd like to give you some good news you don't have to worry about accents yes a lot of us do not understand if the english accent is very thick however do you understand when your own native language's accent is very thick for example i grew up in dhaka and if someone speaks in a very thick dialect let's say a chittagonian dialect or a silati dialect and it's very thick then maybe i will not be understand a lot of their words even though this is my mother tongue and obviously much more than bangla because english is a much bigger language it's the biggest language in the world so it has a lot of accents you do not have to understand most of the accents or even maybe many of the accents you just have to understand british english american english and this is the test this is a standardized test so it will not expect you to know about particular accents still if you think that you do not understand american and british english that much you can just be exposed to more british and american english just watch the news just listen to podcasts watch some movies in english the accent will not most probably be a problem for you you should also practice spelling particularly for listening because if you make any spelling mistakes and this also holds true for reading then your mark will be deducted so let's say you got the correct answer however you made a misspelling you the spelling is wrong then you will not get any marks at all not even partial marks what can you do you can list 
all of the misspellings you did in a document, Google Doc, or on your phone, on your notes, you can list all the spelling mistakes that you made. And then you do not even have to read them every single day, but at least every week. So if you have one month, then you can maybe review them every three or four days before the IELTS test. And if you would like to develop your overall English listening skills, as I said, watch more movies, TV shows in English, listen to some news, listen to podcasts. As long as you're getting exposed to English, you will naturally be picking them up. But also not only passive listening, if you would like to actively listen for it, for example, pronunciation and other stuff, structure, then of course the results will be much faster. You will learn more in this way if you go for active listening. So thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe if you like the content. And as I said, I have already published a book, Alhamdulillah. You can see it in the description. And also check out my other IELTS videos. I have posted already about IELTS reading, all of my strategies, tips and tricks. And also particularly about IELTS writing task one and two. I have made two separate videos on those. Check them out. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you stay with me on my journey to become more fluent in English.